When I found out that the topic was curiosity, uh, I wanted to try to figure out a way to find a topic that would uh, be able to inspire and maybe stoke your creative juices into being curious as to something within the fine arts and within culture and music. And so uh, I think that in my lifetime, conducting orchestras and being on the stage, a lot of people have come up to me and said, what are you doing up there? Uh, what do you do all day? And also, is that a real job up there, conducting an orchestra? And so I'm here to tell you that, yes, it is a real job. And it is a real creative and curious job conducting an orchestra. It is comparable to that, in my opinion, as a CEO or a president of a company who has to juggle many different responsibilities and be in charge of different facets of his or her, her institution. Uh, for myself, I have direct relationship with my experiences when I was in New York working in a, when I was in New York doing my masters, I worked for one of the largest New York PR firms. Uh, and during that time, I was able to uh, learn a lot about the facets of hierarchy of government. And now that I'm an orchestra conductor, I see that there's a lot of similarities. The way that the chain of command works and the way that your employees or your musicians respond to you as a leader. However, the difference being that when I was in New York, we had separate people that served as the CEO, the CFOO, the COO, and all these different positions. For myself, I am all that in one. And so that gives me a lot of experiences in trying to learn how to wear different hats when I direct an orchestra and when I run through the administrative processes of it. Uh, but that's not what you're curious about because most of you know what it's like to work maybe in an office or in a general company. What you're curious about is what I physically do on the podium and how I work with an orchestra. And so they ask, I've had several questions asked to me, such as, here's one question, what are you doing up there? Number two, are the musicians or the people on the stage, are they actually watching you? Number three, what is a baton and what do you use it for? How many batons do you break? Do you throw it at people? Is it a weapon? And the baton is a very curious piece of equipment that I find people are fascinated with. We as conductors carry a myriad of these weapons, different sizes, different shapes, but they do serve a purpose. And so let me dispel a few myths for you. First of all, the baton is actually a device that was made more into the romantic late 1800s. A conductor you've seen come up and direct an orchestra way back a long time ago in the 1600s, that conductor never existed. The conductor was actually one of these string players here who would lead the group in playing. Later on, as groups became formed, it would be like a church director who would take this large staff and just beat it against the ground like a dictator and the orchestra or the ensemble would follow that. It's a dangerous profession, by the way. There was a past composer and a conductor by the name of Jean-Baptiste Lully who had a staff and was stomping it and stomped his foot. And unfortunately, without medical advancement, got gangrene and died from it. So I myself say that I'm in a very dangerous profession. <laughs> because actually, these batons can be very sharp as well. And uh, there was an old story about three, four years ago where Leonard Slatkin, a very famous conductor, was working through a piece of music and actually accidentally stabbed himself through the hand. And so as he was sitting there slightly bleeding, he would hold it against his body and finish the rest of the piece of music. And I thought, wow, I hope that never happens to me. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the baton, though, is, has been uh, forever memorialized by the advent of Harry Potter. I tell you now that with Harry Potter's come around, everyone wants to be a conductor because we can wield this baton and wave it about. And I, I come in front of this ensemble and suddenly I'm the Voldemort of musicians. And I just cast my will upon them and I can berate them and I can attack them and I can demand things until they simply just walk away and then I have nothing left of me. Uh, the second myth, the conductor, although I may seem like a brute that just comes up here and just waves the stick around and makes them play, is also a musician. And in my opinion, a true conductor is also the consummate musician, someone who has worked in the field, 
Just as you all would agree with me, a true leader is one who's worn his followers' shoes many, many miles. A true leader is one who knows his employees and knows how his musicians act and know what it feels like to be on the other side of the coin. So the final myth, do musicians watch the conductor? The question you really want to ask is not do they watch the conductor, but why are they watching the conductor? When I was working in New York, I watched my boss all the time. I watched him because make sure, so, I wanted to make sure that he was uh, around and not seeing me goof off. And so, uh, you know, when I was working in New York, we had this invention that came about, and I think you'll know what it is. Do you remember the Palm Pilot? The Palm Pilot was the predecessor or the initial thing uh, that spurred this whole smartphone and handheld device. I was one of the first in line to get this handheld Palm Pilot, and boy, it's, uh, it truly was a lot of waste of my time. The, uh, but these, the, uh, the orchestra watches a conductor, and there are very, very important facets of a conductor. And so what I thought I'd do today for you is experiment and show you what it's like to hear a piece of music, a very popular piece of classical music, without a conductor, then, just give you a few examples of what it's like when a conductor works with an ensemble, shapes the music, because a conductor has to impart his or her vision and her, his or her uh, will of how they want the music shaped to an orchestra and to an ensemble. A CEO or a president has to be able to convey their mission and their vision for a product or for their services to their employees so the employees can convey that well to the consumer, you. So as a conductor, my job is to take a person's piece of music that they've composed, ask my company to fashion the product very well so that you as a consumer will partake of it and want more. And so the first example we're going to do is I'm just going to stand in front of them and be a leader who doesn't do much. So you see, uh, you may have understood what the piece of music was, but you've also understood that it wasn't quite gelled together. There wasn't a, uh, a single idea or something to tie it in together. And this is my job here as a conductor, to be able to come in and talk to them and be able to show something that I want them to do and then convey it to you. How many of you, by the way, just a quick show of hands, kind of knew what this piece of music was? A few of you. Let me see if I can help fashion it a little bit more convincing.
How was that as far as being able to recognize the music a little bit more? Now, there's still a lot more work to be done with that. These guys uh, came with me just about a few minutes ago and just ran through it real quick. And so, with a baton and a conductor and a leader, you have the ability to shape music and be able to create a narrative arc that allows you to convey an idea to an audience. Now, each of you are conductors, believe it or not. And I, I say this to you because your daily habits encourage you to be leaders and to be people who can guide and convey these ideas to others. First of all, if you didn't know, we speak actually in a very even pulse. And if you take, for instance, the most famous of speeches, for instance, the president's State of the Union addresses, maybe the, mm, the president of a university when they speak at the beginning of the semester, any kind of formalized speech, you'll find out that you can find a pulse and just tap it against your side and everyone speaks in some manner of pulse. And it's a very even pulse when you are prepared with your speech and you say it very eloquently. There are many things that you do on a daily basis that is very symmetrical and very patterned. First of all, your heartbeat. Second of all, your speech. Third of all, even the way that you brush your teeth, the way you walk, and your daily habits. And so, I bet you that if you came up here I could probably take about 45 seconds to just give you a general lesson, and you could probably just do the very same exact thing that I did to a certain formalized degree. And I'm not going to put anyone on the spot right now. But what I want to encourage you is to spark your curiosity in learning about music and being able to know that as, a, as someone who has curiosity, which you all do, you have the ability to direct a group and to formalize music in a fashion that can be spread to many, many different people. And it's important to us as ambassadors of curiosity to embrace this idea so that we have broad knowledge of everything. And so it's a, I appreciate everyone's uh, topics. It's just amazing to hear all these topics. And I think that uh, we need to continue this mission of curiosity. And I thank you for your time.